All right, everybody, how are you? Um, we are having a major technical meltdown. Uh, Scott, just say hello to everybody. Hi, everybody. So uh, we are having a major meltdown, but I am here and I am excited to be here with everybody. Um, so hopefully we'll all chat and talk and Scott's computer is everywhere, uh, so I have no idea. But in the meantime, we do have Tawny Katane here, who's one of our special guests, and we're very excited to have her here. Um, hi, Donna Freshetto. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Paula. Hi, everybody. Scott's working on this. He hung up on me. He's upset. He's pissed. Um, so, oh, wait, wait, wait. I think I got him. I think I got him. Here we go. All right. There we are. Luke, can you hear me now? I can hear you. I can hear you. This is hysterical. Okay. You know why? You know why it wouldn't access the my phone because you and I were on the phone. Oh, okay. 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 That's why I wouldn't access phone. Okay. All right, yeah. Scotty. Well, it's really Listen, good to you see you because I was flipping out. I'm like, oh my god, you're the, the the you're the brains behind this, not me. So you know what pisses me off, Suki? I had what pisses all kinds you off, Scotty? What pisses you off? Kinds, all kinds of video for Tawny from Bachelor Party, from the White Snake video, and 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 John D. Domenico doing his Trump. And now we got nothing. That's what we got. We got nothing. But Tony's here, right? <laughs> Tony's here. I'm going to bring her in right now. All right. Let's add Tony Contain to the stream. Hi, Tony. Uh, hi, guys. How are you doing? Oh, my God. We're so excited to have you here. How are Tony. You? Tony, looking good. And I'm glad that you had no problems kind of joining the stream, huh? Yeah, I didn't. Thank you for the uh, the good link. <laughs> I love the sarcasm that we're grateful to have you here. Oh, Scotty, you just, I don't know where you went. You just lost Scotty. Okay. Bye, right. Scotty. It was we're, fun while it lasted. All right, Tony, go, put your camera like this because we'll fill up the screen with you. There you go. All right. There we go. There we go. So I'm really excited. I mean, I feel like you are the ultimate kind of, you are the Hi. ultimate cover girl. You're the ultimate everything uh, oh, well, for- thank you. For most for most men, you are that idealized version of of sexiness. Um, uh, uh, I'm not really. really. Not really. <laughs> not really. Hey, okay, Tony. You know what? I was putting Thank together. You, by the way. Thank you so much, girl power. <laughs> Good power. Listen, I was putting together some video of you. Mm -hmm. uh, from Bachelor Party with Tom Hanks, one of my favorite movies, uh, the White Snake video. And Suk, would you agree that that White Snake video, when we were growing up, probably the, one of the most popular videos on TV, one of the most popular girls in a video on TV? Uh, beyond, beyond. I mean, I I was like in, I mean, I, I mean, you were the idealized version. Like I hung out with a lot of rockers and you were the girl. You were oh. the girl. Um, and uh, and you were still the girl. I mean, I just love it, Tawny, that you've kind of like recently started spilling the beans about kind of the background as to what happened with the cover, what happened with the videos. And I just wish that everybody knew that, who knew? I mean, I would think that if a guy is dating you, that you would be the first choice, but no, Claudia Schiffer was the first what? choice. Claudia well, Schiffer. I, I just found this out myself. I uh, I knew that there was a girl that had been hired and fired as soon as I met Marty Colner, but I had no idea that it was Claudia Schiffer. I had no idea. I kind of went, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to beat out Claudia Schiffer, I mean, that's not what happened, but to hear that she was almost the girl, that kind of blew me away. And, and 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 tell me about Marty Colner. Marty Colner was kind of like the guy that had to have the final say that you were the girl, that you were the yes. one. You're the one on the cover. You're the and but here's the deal that I love about you. You were so smart. You you were just you were just that person that took him to the bank. And I love you. Ka ching ka ching ka ching. <laughs> Thank you. I was speaking about money. He really did put his money where his mouth was because he was the one who was paid for the video. 
the money for the video came out of his pocket. Wow. So he had, which I, which I didn't know at the time. And it was only like interviews years and years later that I found out. And yeah. And listen, was, was Tony, was there any competition with the chick from the warrant cherry pie video? She's my <laughs> cherry pie. What was her name again? I don't remember her name. You remember how she, cause she was also in like the, uh, I think she was from Playboy maybe, but I remember you, she and you were like the, the tops. I, I could have been from Playboy, but I said no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said no, because my daddy was still alive. I didn't want my dad to see me naked. The cherry pie girl was Bobby Jean Brown. Oh, Bobby That's it, Jean. Bobby, Bobby Brown. That's it, Bobby Brown. Right. Yes. Um, well, let me ask you a question. You know, I was just watching some of those clips with Tom Hanks uh, from from uh, Bachelor Party. Number one, one of my all time favorite movies. Number two, Tom Hanks, that guy in real life was never getting Debbie, that girl in that movie. That's number two. Um, but he did have that funny personality. But what was it like working with young Tom Hanks, pre mega star Tom Hanks? Um probably like it is with him being a megastar. I mean, he's so down to, I can't get this thing. First of all, can I just say I had dental work done a month <laughs> ago, and I've got this flipper tooth in and so it sounds really weird and I get called out for it on the on Twitter or Instagram all the time. So I just want to say in case anyone's wondering why I'm talking weird, it's because I have this retainer in. <laughs> so, so funny. Oh, I just saw my crush on TV. Um, who so who anyways, is it? <laughs> who my crush is yeah break it break I'll it right it. on the show it. let's play let's play guess how about guess right. what's the show basketball player all right the last dance oh michael jordan no 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 oh no dennis rodman no scotty pippen yes oh, oh. oh. He is just some kind of good looking, sweet, just seems like that's such a nice, nice soul. Good guy. I, yeah. I think so, we can make that happen. Is he single? Is he, he's is single he, now. Yeah, he's single. Are, I, is he really? Absolutely. His He and his wife are divorced. Are they? He, oh, my gosh. Yeah, Tony. I'm this telling you. you can make all the reason to do this video for you. See that? <laughs> See what we just <laughs> told you? Isn't his wife, wasn't his wife's name Lar Larza Pippen? Yeah, Larza Pippen, yeah. They she are, yeah. Kardashian's was, friend, yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. Was, uh, that was a whole heated divorce. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to Google yeah, that. Hold on. What? Stand so, by, stand so by. So on that, would you? Stand by, Tawny, before so we Tony, make I, any crazy judgments right now. Okay, Tony, yeah, don't I had to get in trouble. And I don't want to steal, try to steal anyone's man. So I, uh, I really, we really need to know. Okay, to I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it. Yeah. I'm your girlfriend. Tell I'm on Suk. it. Suk, I'm, I really? got the gossip. I got the lowdown. You don't even yeah, have to check it out. Do you, yeah, there. Uh, way to get into him? It's. To get to him? I could go to Dennis Rodman's house. I guess he lives. In <laughs> yeah, just call Rodman. <laughs> no. <laughs> Rodman yeah, no, did that is right. According to TMZ in 2020. They are finalizing their divorce. Oh my gosh. That is I don't hilarious. bring you false information, of course. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to tell my daughter. Who knows? I've got a major crush on her. <laughs> see, look at it. I don't know if you can see the TV right now. Oh my God. So funny. You're watching oh, so you're the documentary. I love you for watching it for the 10th time last night. My daughter's boyfriend is here. They're here from since the uh, pandemic. And um, he was taking a shower in my room and he walked out and he goes, you're watching The Last Dance again? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. Wait a minute, Tony. You've got a crush on Phil Jackson. Come on. No. Well, <laughs> yeah. He, I think he's so cute and sweet, too. But my crush really is on Scottie Pippen. All right. I think yeah. I think that yeah. could happen. I'm telling you. I think okay. that could happen. All right, girlfriend. Really try. Now, try. listen. Let let's let's pretend I just played a little bit of the White Snake video because I had it all queued okay. up until my my computer just shit the bed. Um, so, <laughs> to, you know, when, when you when you did that video, obviously it put you right out into the you know the the, 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 the spotlight. What was that whole when you you know when you were you were married to David Coverdale, you were with you hanging with those guys. Life must have been crazy back then, right? 
You know, it it was the only craziness about it was that we were constantly traveling all the time. But it wasn't craziness in the sense of Motley Crue craziness. Um, <laughs> right. I had um, I had gotten David after he had already been through bankruptcy, already gone through a drug problem. And so when I got him, there were no drugs and there were no alcohol. So it was just sex because we were married, rock and roll because that's what he did, but no drugs. So it wasn't that kind of crazy, but we did our first show. We did open up for Motley Crue. Oh my goodness, completely night and day compared to us. Those were really? bad we were like boys, Motley good Crue. Kids, yeah. And oh Motley my Crue, God. Like the bad angels and the good angels. Yeah. I mean, Coverdale. I mean, Coverdale was English, so he had sort of that. Like, was he English? As was David Coverdale English? Oh yes, and he spoke the King's English, so he was very <laughs> proper. Very proper. No Cockney accents at all, but King's English. <laughs> so I have to imagine when you're looking at Motley Crue and David Coverdale, I mean, that's where you get the dichotomy, right? Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. Had they met at different times back in David's day, then I'm, they all would have been nuts. And I wouldn't have had anything to do with any of them. <laughs> because I didn't do drugs and I didn't drink. And so I couldn't have been with a guy who was, you know, shooting up heroin. <laughs> well, you know what? You know what's so interesting because we we just talked I mean, to Donna. I, I it's very possible, by the way. It's in the book. I'm not spilling any information. <laughs> no knows. But it, we we talked to Donna Derrico, uh, who was also married to uh, Nikki Six. Yeah, Nikki Six. And um, you know, she seems just like you. It just seems like opposites attract. Is she? Was she a Playboy bunny? Yes, she was. She was in Playboy. She was in. Uh, she was in uh, Baywatch. Well, I, I've I've met her before, and she really is a sweet girl. So, She's did you just girl. like bad boys? Is that something about you that just like bad boys? To I, I, I guess. I mean, <laughs> as I'm looking at my TV right now. Well, my first <laughs> love, <laughs> my first love was Robin Crosby um, from Rat, which yes. is how I up doing all their album covers. Wow, I remember yeah. round and round, was up and that. down. Yeah, I love that song. Yeah, I was in that video too. I was in their video. They, they were the only other band that I would, I got, I turned down a lot of bands to do music videos because I was an actress, you know. was a very good one at that, you know what? You're very Thank good. You. Thank you, I, I really appreciate that. Um, I enjoyed doing what I did um, when I was doing it, but um uh yeah where was i going oh this pandemic i can't i don't even know what day we're talking donna about rat. donna derrico rat oh yeah such a so i met her at a convention one time and she's just mm, she's really nice really sweet girl good girl you know, you know what's interesting is like did you ever think when you did that video that you would be like number one when it came to 80s you know um videos the girl that everybody wanted to be with, you know, you're number one. I mean, that split on the on the car, like seal the deal right there. That was the sexiest move in the world. Well, thank you. The um, the little backstory on that was when I came to set, uh, Marty Colner had Paul Abdul there to teach me a few moves. Wow. And so Paul was there. And, and we started talking and she said, do you, have you done any gymnastics or any um, sports in your life? And I said, I was a ballerina and I was a gymnast. And she goes, okay, get up on the car and show me what you've got. So I started doing a couple of things. She turned around to Marty Colner and she said, she doesn't need me, bye. <laughs> and so she uh, <laughs> and Tony, could, said, you, no, could you could um, you just recreate that for us in the room? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I'll never forget. Sue, did you ever see Bachelor Party? <laughs> yeah, just flip the hair. Yeah, yeah give me the yeah, hair. Yeah, just flip the hair. My Jew from, which I can say, <laughs> you can't say. Oh, I can say it. She can't say it. <laughs> oh, you can say it? Oh, I can say it. Oh, okay. All right. I can, Suki can make fun right. of the Indians. I can make fun of the Jewish as well as you <laughs> <Okay>. can. <laughs> We're very PC here, Tawny. We're very yeah, PC. Yeah. I will Especially never make Indian world. jokes. But I'll tell you, Sue, did you ever see Bachelor Party? Yes, of course. I know. I know this. I know it very well. 
bachelor party was just it was such a cool just uh you didn't have to think movie right but then when when you knew tawny that was obviously after the white snake video right did she freeze no nope, she's she back no i'm no. back the no. batch bachelor party no, was so after after white snake video no bachelor party was before before the white snake video okay year like okay so yeah, like maybe five, six, seven years. So you were the one that had money in the bank when you met David uh, yes, Coverdale. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Very, very, very smart. Yes. That you know, it was so funny he because was I, I was putting to, I was cutting together a couple of scenes from Bachelor Party. It's hard to find scenes with you in them on on YouTube. So but I had the one scene where where you and Tom are you're having lunch with your parents. Uh, oh, yeah. And he's like, he's like, well, we're going to adopt a. Uh, I have a 17 year old Korean girl in mind. I've had my eye on, <laughs> and the and, your, and the parents that they think he's just such a piece of dirt, and it's just so funny, man. It was such a yeah. good movie. It was um, so fun to shoot. So you know what's really great, which I love that you're like spilling the dirt about the album cover, um, just doing the vocals. Apparently, so you had yeah. a piece of this whole White Snake wave that happened in the 80s like you you got some money out of this well that and i also got called yoko ono whoa oh yeah and my e there's an e true hollywood story about me that i didn't green light and um and they interviewed john Claudner, who happened to be he was one of the biggest a r people in the business he was david geffen's right hand man and um they interviewed him and at the time it really hurt my feelings but then later I just realized, oh, he just justified, I mean, he just backed me up with everything that I said. He said, yeah, she was the Yoko Ono of the band. She just and figured I did, Like I said, I'm sorry. So, no, I just love that you had that ability to see the business side of it, which so many girls like, you know, video girls in the nineties and in the two, you know, they, they were called just video vixens, yeah. but they never yeah. got paid the money to become this person. Yeah. Well, and also I, I got to make rules like no girls backstage, <laughs> no groupies were allowed backstage. And, and at first, like all the other wives weren't quite, kind of sure what to make of me. But as soon as I made that rule, they were like, they love like her. Yeah, they loved me. <laughs> yeah. All the groupies weren't too thrilled, but you know, oh, well, that's oh, my well. guy. Unbelievable. Your hands off. Unbelievable. If you had um, to pick a white snake song, what would it be? Uh the deeper the love. Oh that's my favorite video. I'm in that one. Um, and that's that's I just I love that video. I love the song. I think David has one of the greatest rock voices of all time. Um and that song just it's uh, there's something really unique and beautiful about it. You know what my favorite White Snake song is, and and I no, I, I love. What's that? I'm gonna tell you. I said no, no, no. Tell me. You didn't. I didn't tell you. Um. First of all, I I love when they did in Rock of Ages. I loved White Snake and Rock of Ages. That was great. Constantine Maroulis, all those guys, so good. Um. But my favorite White Snake is um. I'm going to slide it in right to the top. Slide really? it in. I ain't never go. It's like I don't know. I just it's too hooky for me. You oh, know? but it's a it's that's just, like a good running song. Oh, is it? See, I don't yeah, yeah, very good, very run. good. For me, for me, it was definitely "Is This Love?" That I'm that feeling. I'm feeling. <laughs> is this a love? That Were all I'm those songs feeling. written about you, Tony? Um, not off the first album. Uh, no, they weren't. But on Round and Round was from Rat. Oh, wow. Um, and, and the second album, there's a song called Kitten's Got Claws. That was written about me. Kitten, so, Katane. I always get that a lot. And then you're yeah, like, yeah. Ryan. Yeah. I'm so can I ask you a question? Tell us about Rat and, and everything that kind of transpired, the untimely death, all of it. Just... You know, for fans, I mean, that is just part of rock history. And weren't they a New York band? Wasn't Rat a New York no. band? San no? Diego. You couldn't I, get further away from New York. Oh, I, I must be thinking of some. I thought Rat was like out of Long Island. No. No, no that's Twisted Sister. Like You're talking no, about that, that I Twisted know. Sister. Very good, Siki. Yeah, she's right. Yeah. Twisted Sister. 
Um, no, Rat was at a La Jolla, very privileged okay. area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't think a rock band would come from La Jolla, but no, it, yeah. And it, I kind of helped a little bit with that because the guy I was dating at the time, after I broke up with Rob, was a uh, Pete Angelus who became Van Halen's um, manager, and um, he was the lighting director when I met him. Um, but uh, Oh God, where was I going with that? <laughs> help me. This well, has been help me, Ron. What, what, I was asking, what, they, what were they like? What were they like? Like, what was oh, that whole time in your life about? God, it was about eating Mexican food. <laughs> it was about making enough money at the Friday night gig so that we could, we could splurge on Mexican food. <laughs> I mean, we just lived hand to mouth and did um, tours. I mean, did, you know parties Friday and Saturday nights. But I, what I was going to say about Pete was they called me to see if Pete would come see them at Le, uh, Gazzari's. And then Pete made some changes and then got him connected with Atlanta Records and they got signed. Was, it, was so, that a deep love affair for you? Was that a deep yeah, and just... Yeah. Yes, it, it, my, my first love. And when he passed away, what, what, yeah, I was going to say, what was that like? Like, were you able to, like, do you remember your last conversations or regrets or do you, did you make Pete, did you guys come back together and know that you'll always love each other? Yeah, yeah. we did. Um, as a matter of fact, he said to me that he wished that we would have had children. Oh, and that, yeah. that just broke my heart because he was, he was lying in bed at an old folks home. They couldn't even... He was at Cedar Sinai and he got so big, he weighed over 600 pounds and they couldn't house him there anymore. So they put him in this um, old folks home on La Brea and um, it just, it was so undignified for him. He deserved so much more than, than that. And he took himself out of there with his roadie and gave himself a final shot of heroin and died. Wow. Wow. And uh, Tony, yeah. I noticed you're, you're doing some stuff on Instagram now or online. I know you noticed you were doing some stuff with a friend of yours. I well, I, he's only done two uh, with me, um, but I've done like twenty something. I'm doing YouTube videos. Like I, I don't want to call it a podcast because everybody has podcasts, so mine's just a YouTube channel. <laughs> it's it's Tony's take, right? Podcast. It's Tony's take. It's called Tony's take. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's we changed life. ours to barely live with Suki and Scott. <laughs> yeah, but she's bringing it, Scott. Suki's bringing it. Well, listen, because I, I lost all my stuff. I had it all for you. Listen, thank God. See, the women are able to figure it out. We're able to, like, you know, glue it together and make it happen. So, you know, right. we got it done. We got it done. Right. Exactly. Um, exactly. You know, what What is it? Do your, when you're, when you're, do your kids actually understand like the level of fame, like who you are, like to so many people that grew up during that time? They don't. Care. Um, you know, yes and no. They pretend to me like they have no idea. Um, but it's so interesting. I'm by, so I'm writing a book and I'm having to buy all my own memorabilia off of eBay. Wow. So if anyone's my stuff do not overprice it some guy tried to get me to buy a poster for like nine hundred dollars i'm like no no um, <laughs> but i'm buying up because i don't have any of the stuff i didn't keep anything i didn't i didn't plan ahead i didn't think i was ever going to write a book i never you know so it's uh yeah so when is this book coming I'm out? I'm not going to say what was I thinking again. Go ahead. Say no, that. I want to know when the book's coming out because I think a lot of people want to know because we're very, you know, uh, my husband, Scott, we're all very nostalgic about the 80s because it just seemed a little bit easier um, in a many ways uh, in life. I mean, you know, we didn't, we had the dial-up cell phone. I mean, we didn't even have a cell phone back then. I mean, yeah, it, ro it, rotary phone, baby. It just seemed. You no, know, it, it was. It was such a wonderful time. I mean, we really. It really. It was. It was way the way we dressed, the way we did our hair, the way we ate. I mean, it just. It 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 took over your life. The eighties did. You know. Um. I. I can't find anybody who didn't get touched by the eighties that were our, that were close to our age. I know. You know. I know. It really. It, it just it seeped in every single pore especially if someone like Rob and myself 
that was really into the music, but I go around to different states, different cities, and I talk to people and they say the exact same thing you guys are doing or saying, which is how it, you know, completely um, affected their lives all the way yeah. around. Yeah, I, when, I, when I went back to look at some of that bachelor party stuff, I forgot Adrian's med was in those was in that's that movie right. with you guys. <laughs> right. he, he was a good he was a good, good looking, looking dude, Adrian's med, right? He was. Good he looking. Was. Yeah, he really was. That was a fun group of guys to do a movie with. I bet. <laughs> really fun group of guys. And all went on to be like have tremendous careers for yeah. a, a long amount of time. But you also transitioned to become like a baseball wife too. I mean, how, I mean, how, how you went from rock and roll to baseball? Yeah, I went to the lead singer of a baseball team, the pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's got to be the yeah. lead guy. It's got to be the, lead, be the guy. lead guy. It's got to be the guy that's got the spotlight on him, <laughs> um, and it comes with its own inherent problems when you're that. <laughs> that guy, but we'll, we won't get into that. Um, but yeah, no, I transitioned uh, fine. It was great. I, I, I don't think there's a city that um, has a um, American baseball team that I haven't been in. American, not national. Oh. <laughs> the American yeah. League? American League, yeah. And then I'd pick, I would pick where I would go see him depending on how good the shopping was. Oh. So of course, when you played the Yankees, I would go to New York. You're in New York. When he played. Arlington, you know, played Nolan Ryan. I was like, no, you can keep it. <laughs> Enjoy. Enjoy. That's unbelievable. So let me ask you a question. How can we hook this uh, this this gig up with, uh, what's his name, with Scotty Pippen? With Scotty. What do you I think? Are we can, are we getting surprised? very shy. What do you do at a poor talk <laughs> here? Tony, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sports anchor by day. I can make this happen for you. Are you serious? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I, I'm telling you, we can make this happen. Okay. okay. We can make it happen. Pippen, see, he's not doing anything right now. I'm telling you. <laughs> he's what? He's not doing anything. He might be a little female shy after what he's going through, but, uh, you know. Well, I'll be nice to him. I'll be good to him. <laughs> I promise. I promise. Unbelievable. Well, listen, I yeah. uh, thank you so much for coming on. I know you were so worried about coming on this friggin' show. I was. And then also me losing my mind a couple of times going, wait, what was I going to say? Now I know how my kids feel. <laughs> listen, we had, a, we had a blast touching base with you. I mean, thank you. I, I This is a great you. interview. I hope you enjoyed it. I really did. And you are such a sweetheart. And oh. the, the nice things that you said about me really touched me. Oh, thank, thank you, so you Tawny. Really, really mean. I'll work on Scotty next time, all right? (laughs) I already gave her the accolades in our FaceTime conversation. Toy, hey, by the way, didn't you, did you have the knee surgery or that's still coming up? Oh, so you, oh, um, it's coming up. It's coming up. See, Suki, I knew about the knee surgery. Yes, I did. You know. (laughs) You told me about it. Oh, I did? See, I can have a conversation and not remember. I'm just telling you, I got to get out of this house. <sighs> so funny. Yeah, yeah, the knee surgery. Not looking forward to that at all. Because I have to go into the hospital. And who wants oh. to go into the hospital right now? You don't want to go in the hospital right now. No, no. So, we anyway, right, wish well, you the best. Good luck, Thank sweetie. You. Thanks for coming on. We love you. Yeah, and we want an update on how the surgery went. I'm sure all of our fans want to know as well. So, thanks, Tawny. My pleasure anytime. All right, excellent. Okay. All right. I got I got you on the Pippin thing. Okay, I'm calling you. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Tony. <laughs> she was great, wasn't she? So it's a great girl, right, Sue? Absolutely. I loved her. Uh, John D. Domenico is in the green room all warm. Is Johnny up. Boy here? He's yeah. here. Should we bring him in? Stuka had a beautiful video of him doing Trump. I was going to play, but let's bring him right in because he needs no introduction. John D. Domenico, everybody. Uh, Hello. Everybody. You know, you had Kat, you just had her on. It reminded me of Wayne from Wayne's World. Like, excellent. <laughs> Wayne. All right. Wayne. Cool. I love it. So, Johnny, last time you were on uh, in your Trump attire, which we'll go in, we'll talk about in a second, Suki had just had like a major meltdown on her knee. 
I mean, so it's kind of funny. You, I couldn't even sit, John. Yeah, I mean, wow. I was like, my back was spasming. I was like looking at Scotty going, I, I can't talk to you tonight. Yeah. I can't even sit down. I just I, need to I, lay flat. <laughs> I hear you loud and clear. I tore my meniscus twice and I didn't know that kind of pain existed. And I did it in the middle of a performance. Oh, oh wow. I was, um, it was in Baltimore and I was, um, I was uh, Guy Fieri. Who, uh, Guy Fieri. And there was Guy Fieri, baby. And I, I was coming up on stage, you know, driving the bus to Flavortown, baby. Yeah. And I, and the stage was higher than my hip. So I put my foot up and it did, you know, because you know, he's a high energy. And I just jumped up on stage and I heard, that's the funny sound, baby. What was that? What was that? And then, like, the pain, it, I had torn my, it was just like, I'm glad I was wearing sunglasses because it was so incredibly painful. You know, I was that like, is so funny. piece of taco grease, baby. And I tried how to get off the stage because my knee was going like this. Well, listen, I I had recently, Suk, I was, I was perusing on Instagram uh, looking for bikini models, as I normally do. Um, <laughs> right. But I, I, I came across John doing, John was sitting and talking on a podcast. And he, it was, I think, Christopher Walken meets Donald Trump, right, John? Oh, yeah, on Brad Leah. Uh, yeah, and I said, you know what? I, I got to call John. I, I want to get him on just in person himself, not even the Trump thing. Uh, but, Johnny, listen, I was going to play you as Trump congratulating yourself on this national holiday known as your birthday. So give, give Suki a little of that, because I was going to play it before you put my computer <laughs> crapped out. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited. Today is a very, very special day. It's a national holiday. Well, it's Flag Day, but it's my birthday. It's my birthday. And because no one can really say happy birthday the way I say happy birthday. Because, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but I invented the phrase happy birthday. Happy birthday. I mean, before me, people would say happy, happy, happy. Other people would say birthday, birthday. But I was the one who put it together. I'm the one who put it together. Can you believe it? It's, it's true. That's what I did. That's what I did. And, you know, I don't, you don't have to thank me. You don't have to thank me. I just want your undying. Me. That's all I want. <laughs> I, so love funny, it. I, so love it. I love it. I love it. And give me, give me a little bit of the uh, of of what you were doing with walking and Trump. Well, I was explaining when I when I when I learn a voice, I like to have like anchor voices that are or at least very specific things. So when I was, you know, I've been doing Trump since two thousand and four, but you know, his voice has actually evolved. It's it's very unusual for someone's voice to change. I feel like Jay Leno. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. How are you? His voice has been pretty much the same. It's consistent. Trump's has evolved over time. So when I was kind of kind of upping it and kind of like after he announced, I was really going back and kind of re finessing it. And I was thinking, you know, who who else is from Queens? Because no one speaks like Trump. But Who's closest? And it's like, who else is from Queens? I was like, wow, it's Christopher Walken who's got that thing that that actually Trump does where it's just staccato. Wow, Mike, so amazing. And Trump does the same thing. He's got that staccato. You know, the I have to tell you, so it's... So it's like, that's an anchor voice. And I was saying, and you guys as a New Yorkers will appreciate this. A lot of people don't, you know, anybody who's younger doesn't get it. But Groucho is a big component of Trump's voice now. Groucho Mark. Yeah, because he's gotten raspier over time. But if you think back to Groucho, Trump does that sing-songy, up and down, fast and slow speak. And if you remember Groucho, hello, I must be going. I came to say I cannot say I must be going. I'm glad I came, but all the same, I must be going. I have to tell you. So it's it's the feet, <laughs> like the component voices that I put That's in. So good. That is so spot on. It's crazy. Oh, I love it. So you I know, love it. it's like you know, it's in there. You know. So. And Suk, you've seen him with the Trump hair on the suit, right? Oh, I, I mean, I thought I was listening to Donald Trump. I mean, if I close my eyes, it would be like having a conversation with. Yeah. The president. I mean, it's yeah. kind of crazy. That's what I think. I, I, the, the compliment I love the most on YouTube is that you're more like Trump than Trump. That's than my, Trump. That's my favorite. <laughs> and by tonight, uh, by the way, I'm on James Corden tonight. Oh, um, really? Yeah. They've. Um, when I was on Conan, we used to do these Trump Obama calls. You know, uh, here's a yes. Mix. 
I didn't do Obama. We had an amazing impersonator to do Obama. Um, but they, we did these hundreds of calls and they've kind of resurrected it on Corden on the late, late show. And it's Trump and Fauci. So it's, so it's kind of like, can I eat cake? No, it, are cookies bad? He's, he's always asking all the medical questions to Fauci. So it's very, I love funny. it. And you were, you know, you became my hero. I, you know, I hear you on Howard Stern once in a oh, while now on the phone. That was, that was unbelievable. He had me on for 15 minutes. I prepared I a lot it. of stuff, but it was, it, it was a really long process. You know, I thought it'd be, you know, you always, in it, being an actor and working in TVs and film, you always think things are going to happen. Am I frozen? Okay. I think we're frozen. You're frozen. You sound, yeah. You sound uh, good, yeah. but you're frozen. Okay. So you always think that things are going to um, happen very quickly, but they actually <laughs> happen very slowly. Hold on, John. We're all freezing. Yeah, let's all freeze, shall we? <laughs> now, do they? Oh, do you ha Do you give them the questions for Howard to ask you? No. What they did was. Um, uh, they looked at all my material. They looked at all the videos and then what they would, it took a while. Um, I had, to, I had to put in like 15 different writing samples and then they looked at the videos and then they said, Hey, uh, do two minutes on this and get yeah. back with tomorrow. And then I would turn that in and then they would say, Hey, do two minutes on this. I'm like, what do you guys need? Are you writing a book? Like, what are John, you? John, you're frozen still. John, oh. you know what? John, so sign out real quick and come okay. back in. I'll come back. I'll be right back. That should do it. Because we got to see you when you're doing this stuff. Sue, how great is he? So funny. I can't believe he's on James Gordon tonight. Wow. Oh, my God. He also, we got to hit him up with little doc. He does Dr. Phil. Oh, uh, yeah. Really good also. Very good. Uh, Sue, how we? I can't see any comments. It's, I'm just your guest. Okay, so uh, Deborah Deborah Hannon says she loves James Corden. Irene Fitzhugh says love the impressions. Uh, Deborah Hannon saying, uh, "Here we go." But he's back. Donna Freshetto says he looks so different when he put on the wig. Yeah. Debbie Hollinger <laughs> says the last time he was on our show, she saved all of the impressions oh, and she so watches fun. them because she just and she shares them. She thinks that they're hysterical. Yeah. So, oh, John's back. Here we go. Hey, here I am. <laughs> so, so, John, you're you're in Vegas, right? Yeah, I'm here in Las Vegas. Uh, beautiful day. I see where you are, Suki. Where you are, it's gorgeous outside. It's really nice day, outside. Yeah. My husband is power washing the house as we speak. Are so. you are you in Long Island? Where are you at? I'm in Westchester. I'm in Westchester. Oh, okay, you're north. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my husband usually comes on the show, or my daughter rides on a unicorn. She has already been <laughs> around a couple of times. But my husband is actually outside pressure washing. Yeah, wow. he's usually the pressure washing, painting. <laughs> he's on the unicorn. He's usually swiffering. That's hilarious. Um, so, so, John, you were talking about Stern. So you sent in all these samples. Yeah, so we sent in a bunch of samples. They looked at the videos. And then they basically took the, the, the producers that they assigned to me. And they didn't, they didn't write anything. And I was really flattered about that. Um, they basically said... We took this and this is the question. And then you do that bit here. And then you do that bit here and you do. And it was all very logical. Very last minute though, they said, um, you need to write something about George Floyd and the riots. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> why don't you just give me a ticking time bomb? And yeah. Yeah. Off of my hand. So Listen, we, we, we got to hear Dr. Phil too. Everyone's like, Dr. Phil, Dr. Well, Phil. Breaking. Okay, listen, it doesn't matter how flat you make a pancake. It's got two sides. And you can put a kimono on a squirrel, but it still won't speak Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what that means. Oh, I love it. <laughs> have you, uh, uh, John, have you, have you brushed up on Trump's response to uh, the Bolton book? Oh, I, I wrote a tweet yesterday. I can, I, I wrote a tweet as soon as the book came out. I, I knew what he was going to say. I knew, <laughs> I knew it was coming because it's so classic Trump. But I wrote this the minute I heard the book come out and you can see this online. So this is what I wrote. John Bolton is a liar, has dandruff, worst breath ever. I think he has a loose tooth or something like that. His glasses are from the 80s. His mustache is from the 70s. His suits are old. He smells like mothballs. <laughs> right next, he smells like mothballs. He would bring Ziploc bags to the White House and take food home. Sad. I never liked him. Never. <laughs> never liked him. Never liked him. 
Uh, you must be busy, man. I, you know what? This is like, this is great for you. I mean, it really um, is. <laughs> so it's so incredible to have started doing it back in 2004 and to have this, you know, I think it was, well, the 15th, June 15th, he announced five years ago. It's been yeah. five years of this run. Yeah, we were talking about birtherism back then, right? Yeah, yeah. oh my God. So Absolutely. you you must be you mu you must be praying that he gets another four years. It's good for business, right? Oh yeah. It, it, <laughs> it's just insane that you and I had said this back in you know the last election cycle. I had said even people would say, What's gonna happen if he doesn't get elected? I'm like, Do you think he's gonna shut up? I mean, he's <laughs> never they'll, they'll be lowering the casket down, they'll be like and I'm tweeting as we go, worst basket ever. <laughs> or it'll be the opposite. Totally gold all the way through. It weighs 9,000 pounds. <laughs> so funny. So funny. Yeah, oh, but I great. never, so you know, I, he's just one of the people that'll never, he'll never disappear. He's always going to be. And he has such a large platform. You know, I he think is. if he doesn't, I, I mean, I do think he will get reelected. But if he weren't, I think it, it'll be just instantly a Trump network right away. What That's do you what do you think of that one woman who's gotten so big now, Sarah Cooper, who does the oh, Trump? Oh yeah, she does the Trump uh, cat like karaoke. She she yeah. doesn't do his impression, but she's uh, she's karaokeing his basically I, his. Everyone his started speech. sending me her stuff. I had heard of her before. I don't know why, because I was I think I was already following her. Maybe I saw her on some show. But what she's done is she's just found something totally new. She's adding that nuance that isn't there. And it's really it's it's brilliant. It's brilliant. I had a couple of people say, Hey, do bar the way Sarah Cooper doing Trump. And I yeah. was like and I thought, oh, you know, you know, it's interesting. I'll look at it's really tough. Johnny, Which we you lost you again. Oh, jeez. Hold on. I'll, I'll come, <laughs> off and come back on. Come out. Come back in. <laughs> come out. Come back in. Uh, uh, oh, everyone's like, uh, I follow John on his Facebook. He's so funny. He makes me pee in my pants. That's uh, really Debbie is. again. Irene Fitzhugh loves it. And just, uh, it's good. It's good. I, so I feel bad. You prepared the whole show. It's just like, we have all these things. I know, Suka. I had a lot of good videos, but it's fine. Listen, we're on. We fixed it up, and uh, it's weird. It's weird doing it from my phone. Everything's so small. I know. Yeah, right? Uh, here's John. He's back. Um, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you keep praising, Johnny. I don't know what's going on, Johnny. I don't. I don't know what's going on. Please, you were talking about downloading, Mark. like, the Godfather, one, two, three, and four? I don't know. <laughs> Where's the dead horse? Jeez. Mm -hmm. Um, John, what about, uh, you did him at the beginning with Tawny. Uh, give me a little, give me a little more of, uh, Wayne. All right. Excellent. Hi, I'm Wayne Campbell from Aurora, Illinois. Excellent. <laughs> Say it on Tawny Katane. She's babelicious. <laughs> See, he looks just like him. If she were a president, she'd be Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, man, you know, I, I was doing, I was you know, following, you know, I was doing everybody, but when I was doing uh, Wayne from Wayne's World, because Mike Myers was just such a phenom on SNL, when he started doing Austin Powers, I thought, well, I should be able to do this in my sleep because he's, it's my genetic range. I'm already doing one of his voices. So it was totally groovy to have Austin Powers in the house, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Scott. It's me, Dr. Evil. You know, you're just not evil enough. You're quasi evil. You're semi evil. You're the Diet Coke of evil. Just one calorie. I love that, man. Uh, I love that. Great. Character. I can listen to that all day. So, uh, is there is there anybody that I've missed in the repertoire that I didn't have you do? Uh, did I do Bill Clinton for you? No, oh, you didn't no. do Clinton. Yeah. So, you know, when you do Bill Clinton, the thing about him is he just talks until his lungs are absolutely empty. He'll talk like for two, three, four. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. How are you? He'll just keep talking and talking and talking. And that's why his throat always sounds so dry. That's right. <laughs> I like the biting of the lip. He always yeah. does that, right? Good to see you. you know, yeah. at, at this point in your at this point in your career. Is it is it harder to do newer? You know, you got the voices down that you do. Is it harder to see somebody on and go, you know what? I'd really like to do that guy, and it, there's and you just like I just can't get it down. 
I, you know, I, um, in the beginning when Obama came out, I was trying to think like, uh, here's the deal. You know, you're trying to learn like a voice and figuring out the placement in the mouth. You know, like everybody's a, a little different, you know. Uh, and then I was, and now everyone keeps reaching out to me saying, Biden, Biden, Biden. And I swear I've diagrammed his voice and I cannot at Get this it. moment yeah. figure out a way in. He's just, there's certain people. Um, I, I, number one, he doesn't have a phrase that he repeats that you can kind of lock into. Yeah. You always look for that one phrase, you know, like, and Obama is a great, you know, like, uh, here's a deal. So, you you know, but I cannot <laughs> find it. And I don't know anybody who's doing Biden. And if you look at all the people who played Biden on SNL, no one even approximated his voice. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't feel like he's got that voice where if you, you heard it, you're like, oh, that's Joe Biden. Right. Yeah. Right? I don't, he doesn't yeah, have that voice. And he doesn't have any phrases where you go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, with Trump, it's huge. It's fantastic. It's tremendous, I have to tell you. You know, really, <laughs> really incredible. There's so many. It's like a book of Trump phrases. I love and, that. Yeah. And, and with him, I, I don't really see anything there. And there was only uh, when Mitt Romney was running, uh, I guess, two election cycles ago, uh, there was like one guy who could do him. And I, I forget the guy's name, but I was like, he, it was so perfect. But there's certain voices that it's very difficult. And um, I always think of Frank Caliendo because he's amazing. He's Fantastic. So yeah. talented. He was on Brad's show too. And um, it, his Madden is impenetrable. Like, yes. Like a lot of times you'll hear people do a voice and go, I see what he's doing. I see what he's doing. Him, man, it's like, it's like airtight. You cannot figure out how he's doing. It's literally magic. Yeah, his Madden's it. amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. The funny thing is to me, we we had another guy on a uh, uh, J L Colvin. Yeah, yeah, he's JL, doing, he yeah. does Trump. He does Trump. He doesn't look. He doesn't try to look like him, but he does. He does a decent Trump. We had him on, and the funny thing is, people send him videos of Sarah Cooper, who's lip syncing Trump. Yeah, and they're telling him, hey. This girl does a much better Trump than you. And he's like, but he's like, I'm literally doing Trump. She's lip syncing the voice. That's why she sounds so good. I yeah. crack up and they're like, oh, she's much better than you are. Yeah, like, I know. People I'm don't really get, yeah, people don't know what's going on. Currently, I'm on TikTok like the rest of the planet. And somebody took my Trump and now people are doing my Trump thinking it's Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. A bit in my act where I say, you know, I love the Jewish people. Tremendous people, the Jewish people. Fantastic people. And you know, Butler, she's Jewish. Did you know that? Did you know that? And I love the Jewish people so much that a lot of people think my name, Donald J. Trump, is Donald Jewish Trump. But it's not. It's not a Jewish. It's it's genius because I'm a genius. I'm an absolute genius. So they're doing that thing now, and people have been messing, sending it to me, saying they're using you, thinking it's Trump. Oh, you know? Dad, listen, that's the ultimate compliment. Right there, right? Yeah, it'd be nice if they actually credit me. But you know. <laughs> so listen, uh, John. So gonna, you're recording tonight. Yeah. And then, and then, and and on your Facebook and TikTok, is that where everyone's going to catch you? Yeah, you can you can find me on Facebook. Um, what I'm doing a lot of right now are cameos. I do full makeup Trump cameos. It's been super busy for Father's <laughs> Day. Father's got, Day, yes. So, did you get me one of those for Father's Day? Come I on. mean, that'd be pretty good. Yeah, I, you know, yeah. Um, tomorrow's a shooting day. I'm actually heading to. I've been, you know, I've been home like everyone else. Um, uh, tomorrow I've got my no, um, Saturday. I'm leaving for LA. I have a shooting day Sunday in Los Angeles. Oh man, do you believe this? Uh, did John, I'm you having a stroke. Yeah, I was gonna say. You see how it's I, hello, everyone. It's me, Mort Feldman, and I'm having a stroke on the show. Listen, go out one more time. Come back in for for the goodbye. Oh, he's a pisser, man. Oh, he's so good. So, I want to do impressions like that. I love it. He's so spot on. It's not even funny. Spot on. It's it's insane. It's insane how good he is. Oh, here Somebody, he is. Here he is. Here's John. He's back. He's back. Am I on a dial up? What is happening here? <laughs> you got the AOL? Wait, did you, did you sign up for six free hours of AOL, John? Yeah. You know, we, there's a, I'm not going to mention who the internet provider is here in Las Vegas, but it's a monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
and it rhymes with socks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, little cocks right there. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's like a watermelon going through a garden hose every time you... <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I love it. Uh, I love so anyway, it. yeah, I'm doing the cameos, and there's a ton of the the other videos, and you know, pretty much everything else has been held up, or it's slowly, slowly coming out. But the viral, you know, I've been actually doing much more viral content, and I'm going to be shooting one tomorrow about the rally. Oh yeah, yeah, love it, love it's it. So the, John, listen, go ahead. Because <laughs> Father's Day is coming up on Sunday, how can our viewers? If they go to cameo.com and they type in your name, right, you'll yeah. come up. That's It'll come up. You'll see me in full Trump makeup. Uh, they run around two and a half, three minutes. I just broke my 800th cameo. And wow. I'm number, and I'm number one in politics. In front hold of on, hold on. And... Let me hit the cash register on that. Hold on. Let me, 800 of them? Wow, good for you, man. Yeah. So, good I'm for very, you. listen, finally, <laughs> other than Zoom calls, and uh, some of uh, the voiceover work, like Gordon and stuff like that. That's, you know, we're all just kind of, you know, whatever. Doing. I love it. Well, listen, man, I'm going to, well, I'll be watching tonight. I'm, I like to stay up late. I love and watch Gordon TV. Too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look great. for it. He's great. He's great. I'm very excited. very excited. Thank you, my man. Listen, we, we got to have you back. All right. Sometime soon. Absolutely. I'll, I'll check in, uh, you know, in a few weeks. Excellent. All right. We love Definitely. you, pal. John, you're the best. Thank you, See buddy. You. Have a great Father's Day weekend. You, you too, too, my you man. Too. Thank you. Bye. Oh, I love that guy. Oh, man. Bless you. Thank you. All right, Sook, listen, at least we had a show, right? Uh, listen, it was, uh, we put it together. I'm glad that I downloaded Stream oh, StreamYard <laughs> back in the day. Yeah, good for you. Jesus. You just you just need to tell me what else I need to get to share the screen. I mean, too bad you couldn't bring it all up so I could just start bringing things up. But. I know, I know. I really, I literally, I worked for like an hour putting together Tawny's videos and the White Snake and John, and I, I had it all ready to go. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna have to call a tech because I don't know what happened. I lost all my my mic and my camera. Uh, it just. It was just the weirdest thing. I I I couldn't hear you. Yeah. And then when I heard you, it was so bad. And then I was like, all right, let's just go for it. <laughs> and then you're like, no, no, let me just screw around. Down. And then it just went. It just went. So oh, you know what? I before we go, I I was gonna pull up a, a headline from an article. That's that you you get you can win fi a fifteen minute Zoom date with Keanu Reeves. Did you see that? No. Yeah, yeah. You could you. There's some kind of thing going on with Keanu Reeves that you. How awkward would that would that be? <laughs> if you're just sitting there on Zoom with Keanu Reeves. Hi, how are you? I love you. Right, right. Ah! And it's not like officially for like a show like ours where you're interviewing him, and it's just like, oh, hey, Suki. So uh, how are you? Good, uh, Keanu. What do you? And I mean, what do you talk to the guy about? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think it's like any celebrity, right? Trying to make it work. What's going on? Oh, oh my gosh. My back is killing me. I swear I took, I took a Mid Midol? No, not Midol. What is it called? Dones. Dones, yes, last night. Dones back pills. Um, oh. you, want, you, want, you want to take tomorrow night off, Sue? Should we take tomorrow night off? Don't we have Judy Torres tomorrow night? Is that happening? No, we haven't booked her yet. yet. So, yeah, we can take tomorrow night off. It's tomorrow's Friday, right? Tomorrow is Friday. I mean, listen, I feel like, I mean, I feel like uh, our computers are just. <laughs> do, we, do we start, do we start our new summer hours now? I mean, I think we could start our new summer hours. I'd be down for that. I would definitely be down for that. Listen, uh, I want to tell everybody that you got to watch Find Love Live if we don't yes. see you tomorrow um, on Monday at 11. I will do my best to get on the show on Mondays. But it kind of gets cuckoo at seven o'clock. Aren't we, so. we going to be off on Mondays too? Oh yes, that's right. We are. Summer hours are beginning today. That's perfect, actually. <laughs> unless, listen, unless unless I get like, like a, a crazy guest that we got to get on, we'll we'll just we'll, we'll we'll be back on Tuesday. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that works. Actually, that works for everybody. I think everybody would love that. Um. So yeah. So, but don't forget to watch, guys. I need your support. I need your love. I need to get it going for TLC. So, uh, please do watch TLC 11 o'clock, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard, and then check your local listings wherever you are. It's called Find Love Live. You know what I'm thinking? We maybe could pull off for tomorrow. Maybe a little Phil Paz takeover for tomorrow night. Yeah, that sounds good. That's what I'm thinking. It depends on if your whole, you know, Scotty, first of all, depends on if your computer is going to get back up. Oh, Mike, I'm, I'm going to call a guy. He'll get, I'm sure it's nothing. I just didn't know where to go to fix it. Okay.
because I, I saw the broadcast. I saw you. Just my stuff wasn't working for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. I Yeah, yeah. And then so, you're going to have to teach me, give me a little lesson on how to bring things up. Yeah, no, it's it's easy. And Tawny was great. She was great, right? She was awesome. Who knows yeah. she had a crush on uh, Scotty on, Pippen? Uh, Scotty Pippen. It's, I swear to you, Scotty, if you if you make that work. Imagine that. Imagine that. I'll be a hero, Sook. You will be a hero. By the way, Scotty, happy Father's Day. Diana oh, Gonzalez, Anduhar, everybody's wishing you a beautiful weekend. Um, I hope you're spoiled. I hope you get a cup that when you add a hot liquid, you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully my wife got me a cup that has a she repackaged on. it. Hopefully it'll show up by Labor Day. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be like a full circle moment, Scotty, a full uh, circle moment. That'd be great. Uh, yeah. So listen, all right, I will, we'll talk. I'll talk to you. All um, right. Listen, so for, for where we're leaving it, uh, we will uh, try and uh, see you on Tuesday. We're going to take our summer hours, so we'll be yeah. back on Tuesday. And I will put up various uh, Snapchat grandma messages in the meantime to let people <laughs> know what's uh, what's happening. All right. I love you, Scotty. All right, babe. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for everything. Talk all right. See you later. All right. Bye. Bye. And three, two, one. Bye, everybody. And happy Father's Day to all those wonderful people out there. We love you. We love your support uh, and everything that you do. Bye. This is my first time in the control, so I'm trying to figure things out. <laughs> Bye.